Guys, welcome back to another episode of Atlas Survival Shelters. I want to announce that I actually have some bomb shelters in stock. And in today's video, I'm going to show you some of the bomb shelters I have in stock. Because of this Ukrainian war, a lot of people are calling and saying, what do you have in stock? So I'm going to show you today. And I'm also going to give you a tour of my factory like no one's ever done before. So you can see all the bomb shelters because you can't get here because you live in another state and you want to buy a bomb shelter. Guys, these videos that I make will save your life and save your money. Trust me on this, okay? No, nobody is a bigger patriot than me. Let me tell you that I sell to every single state in the United States of America. I even sell to Canada. I even work in Canada, okay? Um, so I hope that answers the question. A lot of people call me and say, do you service Minnesota or M Michigan or Pennsylvania or wherever? Yeah, the answer is yes, guys. I service everywhere. Um, also, Atlas Survival Shelters is in Europe. We even have a factory in Poland that is manufacturing our bunkers at this time, and they do an excellent job. Unfortunately, 23 of the men from the factory have gone on to the Ukrainian war to fight in that conflict over there. So let's all pray that these guys come back and healthy guys. Okay, seriously. We have dozens of bunkers here for you to see. If you guys want to come and see every single bunker that I make, come now because I am literally swamped and covered in bunkers. From the smallest bunker, which is this one right here, look how big it is. I mean, with the 10 foot tall, interior because we have eight foot ceilings and two foot of storage under the floor to the fat boy 14 feet wide 50 feet long sunken living room with 10 foot ceilings uh 11 foot by 23 foot living room down way at the bottom with ceiling fans and deer heads hung on the wall guys i've got the most incredible bunkers that you can buy in the world they're fantastic they're made the best and i'm going to show you how i make them a hundred percent of people that compare Atlas Survival Shelters to the competitors, and I use that term lightly, when they compare, they see these videos, they buy bunkers from me because I prove to you how good my bunkers is. I don't know how these people stay in business. I guess there's some people who buy bunkers that find an ad, they call them and they just trust them. And boy, they learn the hard way. What makes my bunkers so good before we walk out in the factory? The number one thing is the Swiss made MB serial filtration system. And if I don't have Swiss, I'm using Israeli as well. Guys, when you're in a nuclear bomb shelter, air has to be pulled into the bunker and it has to pass through a carbon filter and a HEPA filter. Therefore, I'm using nothing but military grade MB serial filtration systems. The air system that I put in most of my bunkers is this one right here. This is a VA 150. That has 108 pounds of carbon inside it. Where the air system being used by the competitors in America have eight pounds of carbon in them. But that's not the worst part. I'm gonna show you in a second. The motor in the Atlas Survival Shelter is this big giant motor that runs a centrifugal pump. And what does a centrifugal pump does? It creates suction. And why does that matter? Because you gotta suck so much air into your bunker then it fills the bunker up with breathable air after it went through the MB serial filtration system. Then it's got to push it out through a series of pipe on the other side. It sounds like a hard task, and it is. This is why the Israelis even have a bigger centrifugal pump. But did you know that in both these countries, bunkers and air systems are just a way of life? But do you know what the competitors in America are using? This is sad. But instead of having this big motor and centrifugal pump, this is what they put in there. This little plastic DC powered fan to bring in all the air and push it out. Guys, I don't know how that's going to work. This is one right here. Take a look at this. It's got this little DC motor in it and this little plastic fan. You know that they sell this one for like $4,000 and a big version for $8,000 and the other guy sells his for like $5,000 and there's a $35 fan in there in a little plastic housing. I don't know how they get away with that. So guys, if anyone's trying to sell you a bunker like that, insist that they get you a Swiss made NBC air filtration system. Don't sell it for anything else. Otherwise, just don't spend your money. But guys, the things that makes my bunker so wonderful that so many people are choosing me to do their bunkers 
is the eight foot tall ceilings, under the floor storage, built in water tanks, gas tight doors, nice wide, gradually easy to go up and down stairs for old people, bulletproof nuclear blast hatches that are AR 503s and they think they'll stop everything but a 50 cal from point blank range, but they will stop at 50 cal from a 200 yards. So if you had to use it as a shield, you could shoot at people from behind it. Atlas Survival Shelters makes it a standard that we have decontamination rooms in our bunkers. We have mud rooms. We have generator rooms. We do everything right. We do it to military standards. Don't fall for an, a bunker that's just made like this. Someone, they bought a bunker from a company up Missouri or Kansas, wherever, and now they want me to fix it. Don't fall for these tornado shelters called bomb shelters. Guys, if you put a stripe on a Camaro, it looks faster. It doesn't go no faster. So if you put one of these plastic air systems in a tornado shelter, it doesn't magically become a nuclear fallout bomb shelter. But that's what people in the marketplace have been offering people. So guys, I make these videos to help you to save your family's life and to save you from wasting your money. But guys, sit back. We're going to take a walk through the factory. I'm going to show you everything I'm building and show you some of the bunkers that are for sale that you can buy today if you call in quick enough because they won't last long. So I'm going to give you a tour of this factory from one end to the other so I can point out shelters that might be available for sale or ones that I could finish out real quick because the demand is really high right now. So this is a 10 by 20 foot culvert I have started. Um, I don't do as many of these anymore because I have the Platinum Series and the Safe Cellar, which is a modular bunker with the underfloor storage because that's what people actually like about the culverts is the price and the fact they have underfloor storage. But these actually have more underfloor storage. So I've got a 10 by 20 and it looks like I've got a 10 by 21 right there. So this thing right here is what's called a fat boy. This thing is massive, largest bunker in one piece uh, that I can literally make and transport across the country. It's 14 feet wide, 50 feet long. It's 11 feet, four inches tall. It's got uh, 10 foot ceilings and a second living room inside. It's got eight foot ceilings in the bedrooms and the bathroom, and that thing is gigantic. And I actually have two of them here. And you see the big massive I-beams that are on the ceiling? That's what's gonna hold up the earth. So those are big giant I-beams and they're two feet on center. So if you came here, you'd see these two, all right? Then this is a 10 by 50, okay? Now all these are sold, unfortunately, but I'm gonna point out some that I do have that are for sale. There's one right there, but unfortunately it's sold too. So this is what they call, a, is what we call the generator room, the mud room, and the decontamination room for our platinum series. So inside there is the generator. When you come down the stairs from the top, you enter right there, and this is the mud room in our bunker. And it's pretty big. That's about a six foot mud room. And then you got a decontamination room. So you come down into your bunker, you would step in this room, and that's the decontamination shower. There's a little porthole that you can look out from inside, like that, little things like that we do on all our bunkers. But this actually attaches to the door on the side of the bunker. So this attaches right there. So there they are making another one. We're known for our doors. These are marine grade gas tight doors that we put on everything. They're making another generator room and mudroom right there. This bunker right here is a 10 by 40. So if you come right now, we have pretty much almost every single bunker that we make size-wise. I mean, I literally got everything here. So this is a 12 by 30, and boy, these 12s are really wide inside. They're nice. So it's gonna be dark in there. But they always have under the floor storage, big giant angle irons. See those angle irons right there? These are gonna be the post for the wall dividers, and this one has an escape tunnel. This is a water tight. This is a round water tight. This is a 10 by 38. This bunker is for sale. This is one of the prototypes we're making for a water tight round. And we're making it in sections so it's stronger. So it's like a centipede. We did 10 foot, we put a wall. 10 foot, did a wall. 10 foot, did a wall. And eight foot, did a wall. So it's gonna have a bathroom, a bedroom, a living room, and a kitchen and dining room. 
And this bunker also has the escape tunnel. And looking back through it, that's what it looks like inside right now. And this bunker right here is a, that looks like a 10 by 50. This bunker right here is a 12 by 50. This is called the big boy right here. This is another one of our mud rooms right here in our generator rooms. So this one has a smaller generator room. So this is designed for batteries. So you'll put a battery in there, extra solar panels. We're in a, one of the Atlas survival shelters. We're gonna go through the decontamination room here. And then over here is the generator room. Okay, so it's got a solar panel that closes. But this is the solar solar generator that's EMP hardened. This bunker right here is a 10 by 20. And look how tall they are. They're all tall. They always have I beams on top because, like I said, under the floor storage, built in water tanks, eight foot ceilings. This is a mini. This is our smallest shelter we make. This is the eight foot by 12 foot mini. And even it's tall, just like the big one, same height but it's just, uh, it's small, but it will have the same stairs, a little four by four mudroom, and a bulletproof blast hatch on the top. And this bunker here is a 12 by 50 big boy, another one. This is a 12 by 50, and right now I'm in the living room. Now these are full kitchens with granite counters. There's the door that would enter the bunker. This living room is like 24 feet long. It's got two master bedrooms and the bedrooms are big. Um, 12 feet wide by 11 feet long, air comes in there. They all have storage under the floor. So all these little holes, these all open up to the water tanks and the underfloor storage. Has a full bathroom in here. Vanity, shower, flushing toilet. There will be sliding doors that will be installed after it's been put in. The other master bedroom. In this particular bunker, actually is going to lead to a second bunker. So there's actually two of these. So you'll go through there and you'll be into the second bunker with the other bedrooms and stuff. And as far as these doors go to build your own bunkers, we're basically, these are all sold. We just haven't shipped them yet. So we'll be getting more of these in. This bunker right here is a 12 by 20. So this is a, a wide one, 12 feet wide, 20 feet long. Really nice, look how wide that is. It does show up in the video, but it's really wide. And of course, again, our gas tight doors. Now we did get in, we did get a brand new saw that is speeding up our production. That saw right there is like, it's automatic. It measures it, cuts it, automatically does it. Only thing it doesn't do for you is cook your breakfast in the morning and tell you have a good day. But look at that, we can cut 24 pieces a channel at a time. So we're gonna be able to keep up with the production and the demand. So we got that automated saw, and then we also got this big giant hide mech in too. Um, as far as parts go, we're shipped, see there's an air system that's gonna ship to Canada. These are air systems, actually I'm not Canada, uh, California. And uh, this is an air system and door that's going to Pennsylvania. So do it yourselfers, give me a holler. Okay, here, this is another mudroom and generator room. Uh, this bunker over here is a 10 by 50. That bunker there is another big boy, 12 by 50. And looking into this generator room, see we actually, the generators are sometimes so big that we've got to put them in first and weld them in the back wall. But most of them, like the 8KWs, they will fit through the doors. So let's say we're in the bunker, this is a generator room. You'd have the gas type door. Then you have the second door, and then you have the third door. With three gas tight doors, I'm not worried about carbon dioxide if there was a leak to get into your bunker. But this is how it works. Come out inside the bunker, you go through the decontamination room, you go through the gas tight door, and then you go up the stairs, okay? And then if you wanna go in there, you go through that door. All right, they sprayed the entrance. Go down and check on it. This thing's tall in here. First 
thing you notice is how tall the ceilings are. Eight feet tall. It doesn't show up on the video, but it's really tall. There's your generator room. They'll put a solar in there. There's your doors. Now this is your decontamination room. Your mud room. And there's a couple more of these entrances. So our Platinum Series, when I talk about my Platinum Series versus my Say Cellar, the Platinum Series always has generator room, mud room, decontamination room. As far as our stairs go, they're always 36 inch wide. I can't go wider. They're always a non-skid tread, so it's a diamond plate tread. Another generator room. So we'll go over these bunkers over here. That is a 12 by 20 water tight. That bunker is for sale, 12 feet wide, 20 feet long, and it does have a mud room on it. It's got a 10 foot mud room, and that's made out of half inch thick steel. So if we look at this plate here, look at that half inch thick. I'll give you a look inside. So I've got two bunkers I found that are for sale. Okay. That's this big, heavy thing. Okay, this is a 10 by, that's a 10 by 30, I believe. Yeah, 10 by 30, does have the escape tunnel. When you look inside him, there's one 300 gallon water tank in there. 25, these are some of our gas tight doors. This is a 10 by 15. This is actually a pretty roomy bunker for a 10 by 15. This one even has the escape tunnel. Look at that. 10 by 15 with a 300 gallon water tank, the marine door. Now this is what's called the safe cellar. Safe cellar only has a four by four bedroom. See, that's the four by four bedroom. So you'll come down the stairs and you'll enter straight to the bunker. And then on this side, there will be shelves over here where you can put batteries and your boots when you take it off. So you come down here, take off your boots, you want to track them in there, you got your batteries out here, and this will feed to the cables of the batteries to get the power in the bunker, then it feeds to the outside to the solar panels. But this is a 4x4 four four mudroom on a safe cellar. Okay, so let's jump, and this is actually for sale. Take a peek outside, and let me show you some of the bunkers outside, because this get it really good, because we're going to go inside some of these bunkers. So I stepped out back and boy, we've got bunkers everywhere. Okay, and I mean, it's all over the place. But anyway, all different sizes. So they're gonna have to come out. Now they gotta get sandblasted and painted. So this is a 10 by 40, and this is pretty cool inside. That, in case you're curious, that is one of our escape tunnels right there. So this is a 10 by 40, and I, I can automatically tell this one's gonna have a Fort Knox gun vault door instead of the marine door leading into the bunker so it can be really pretty and this also has a five foot wide mudroom because i can tell by that length right there but let's take a look inside here it's a really cool bunker so this is going to have a full kitchen look at this really nice kitchen and i love this look at this it's got a see-through you can stand in the kitchen hang out with your friends you've got bar stools right here and you got to open to the living room so he's also put tubing on the wall because that's going to be solid guns i can tell because that's what we do for a gun room then you come back here and you'll have a master bedroom it'll have the sliding door there's your escape tunnel so this is hardy board so what you're seeing there's no wood in here that's plastic that's concrete um the only wood in this entire bunker is that beautiful kitchen so this will be the living room and then it's got a full bathroom in the back. So this is a one bedroom, 10 by 40. Huh. Pretty cool, huh? When this is done, it's gonna have granite kitchen counters, uh, oak cabinets, beautiful hardware, uh, full uh, uh, fridge, full upright fridge. Pretty nice. Let's look at another one. Okay, so this is inside our paint and body shop. Uh, these are stairs that have been sandblasted and painted. Yeah. 
there's a gun safe over there. Now, after we sandblast them, this is a 150 year tar coating, but we sandblast them first so the paint will stick onto them. If you guys watched any of my other videos, you know that if you don't sandblast it, the paint will not stick. So we blast it both inside and out. Good job. This is actually a gun safe we're making for a client. All right, let's go take a look inside some other bunkers. And there are some of our hatches. Now these hatches are three foot by seven foot. They're made out of AR 500 bulletproof steel. Now this is a military grade nuclear blast hatch. So this is designed to absorb blast, uh, the pressure from a blast as well as be shot at by guns. Now when it's installed, it will have 12 inches of concrete around it. That's what the rebar's for. And then back over there, we have a bunch of bunkers. I even got a bunch of my smaller shelters made up for inventory sitting here in stock. So this is one of the 10 by 15s I got, but this one does not have the underfloor storage, but it's painted inside. Now this one's got a custom entrance in it. It was gonna have a staircase that comes off at a 45 degree angle. This is the mud room. It's got some shelves in here. So that's a nice little bunker. Shelves there for your batteries, for your electrical to go from your batteries. It's got a porthole, gas tight door. And inside it, it's actually tall. It's like a room. It's really wide. So I'm gonna go against the back wall here. So it's 10 feet wide, 15 feet long on the money. It's set up for a Swiss VA40 MB serial filtration system. Those are for plumbing and fittings in the wall. This is the other side of it. It's really big. Feels like a big bedroom. This is the inside of it. You would come out through here and you go up the stairs. Then I got all these other bunkers here about ready to go. So this is an eight by 20 without the underfloor storage. It's got eight foot ceilings. It's set up for two sets of swing down bunk beds. And then a swing down two couches over here. So this is made for two couches and two swinging beds. So it will really sleep six people. Set up for the VA40 Swiss made air filtration system. It's got the gas tight door. 20 feet long inside. It's really tall ceilings. It's got a staircase that will lead right up to a hatch up there. It's got shelves behind here so you can put your boots and batteries. And again, this is a eight by 20. Here's one of my mini culverts right there. I think I sold all those. So here's a couple bunkers. Let's take a peek in these. The way we move them around the yard, we put axles underneath them and we roll them around like a trailer. So let's see what's inside this one. Oh, this is nice. So this is a 10 by 30. So when you would come down your stairs, you would open this door and you would have a flushing toilet. There's your overpressure blast valve, your little peek out hole, your little peep hole. It's got a nice sliding door. Look at that. The inside of these bunkers are really nice. They feel like those little mini cabins that you see next to the highway. Then this has a walk-in shower, step-in shower. It's really nice. Look at the trim work in here. It's really nice. Then this has a swing down bed, which is not normal. Normally this would be a set of bunk beds, but the lady wanted a set of swinging beds in here. So see how they stand up? That's like in an RV. Then look at this counter in here. Wow. Beautiful kitchens, beautiful counters. And that's granite. I bet that's a 12 or 13 foot counter right there. Wow, and again, composite floors, hardy board walls, little stick out counter here. So I guess you could put another set of bunk beds in here, a full size couch, and there's your Swiss made NBC air filtration system, but that will have an entertainment center in front of there. 
Uh, I don't know what all that is, but uh, this is a 10 by 30. If any of you are watching this and you're like, I like that bunker, I want that one there. Okay, so let's see what this one has. Looks like they painted it. They moved it out. So there's the axle I was talking about, how we moved the bunkers around. Now that bunker right there weighs six, uh, 50,000 pounds. Or is it 60,000? Can't remember. It weighs one of them. So where's the door at? All right. Okay, I can open this up. See what's inside here. Okay. So this is a 10 by 50, as I said. Let's see if I put this door all the way back so the window doesn't close it on me. Okay. All right, so you step in here. You got a walk-in shower. Again, there's your flushing toilet, overpressure blast valve, peephole, <coughs> vanity with granite. Of course, again, you got the sliding doors. Okay. Now this is gonna be a bedroom. This will have one, two, three, four sets of double, triple bunk beds in here so you can sleep 12 kids in here. Of course, all the underfloor storage. And as always, everyone in the bunkers, as under the floor storage and built in water tanks. <coughs> then the kitchen is that. I do a beautiful job on these kitchens, I gotta admit. I love these kitchens. Of course, when you put granite counters in a bunker, it's gonna stand out and all stainless steel. And of course, it should have reverse osmosis under here, which it does. So it's got a sediment filter under the floor. And then it's got reverse osmosis under the sink. So I don't know where the tanks are, but there's two 300 gallon water tanks in here. Then this has a master bedroom. There's the NBC air filtration system. That's an and there. So this is a 10 foot by 10 foot master bedroom with the slide door, LED overhead lights. Living room, kitchen, dining room, bunk room for the kids. Like I said, this is a 10 by 50. Then a full bathroom, six foot wide bathroom, walk-in shower, flushing toilet, vanity. All right, let's go outside and see what else we got. So that is a generator pod for a culvert shelter. And these are more of our Platinum series mud rooms and decontamination rooms. So we're going to go inside basically a plain bunker that has no underfloor storage. Okay, so normally when you get a bunker, this is what they're like inside. Okay, it used to be like this, but mine have eight foot ceilings. But this is a plain bunker. This will be the dividing wall. So you would walk in here. This will have a full bathroom. This will be the bunk room right here. There'll be a bunk bed here, bunk bed there. This area here will be the kitchen and living room. Then there's the master bedroom. Then if you walk through this door here, it leads to a second bunker because there's two of these. They're connected, but because there's no storage in here, if you put any food supplies in here, it would pile up. So let's go see the second bunker that goes to this one here. Okay, so the two will marry up in the field. So this is going to be, check this out. That's one of the 10 by 51 culvert shelters. This is the storage bunker, a 10 foot by 40 foot storage bunker. So when you don't have underfloor storage, what you got to do is bring in water tanks like that. They got to sit above ground. Now those should be able to stack on top of each other. But uh, this is a side-by-side -side with no underfloor storage. And that is one of our condensation air pipes that we patented. So this allows condensation that's built up from pulling air in to go through a check valve and not get to your air system and fill your carbon full of water and shorten the life of your NBC air filtration system. And that is another one of our culvert shelters. That looks like a 10 by 10 by 30 or something, 10 by 27. We got so many of them around here.
This is a 12 by 27. That's basically the big boy, but a short one. It's 27 feet long, but it's got a mud room and it's gonna have a generator room. And it's got access from the top so you can lower a generator down inside it or take it out if you had to service it. And that is gonna be a watertight big boy. That pipe right there is 12 feet diameter. It is 50 feet long and it is made out of 5 8 plate. And boy, is it heavy. This is gonna be interesting and fun. Wow, check this out. Look at the wells on this thing. Those wells are over an inch wide. Welded both inside and out. How cool is this? Look how thick that steel is. That is thick. It's almost three quarters of an inch. Then the outside welds are the same thing, almost an inch wide. And now look how clean they are. Well, guys, that's about it. I gave you a quick little tour of Atlas Survival Shelters because I know a lot of you guys are thinking about buying a bomb shelter. And I want you to know that we are for real. And we're very proud of the shelters we make here. And uh, I'll do a little quick walkthrough again. So anyway, that's it. So if you guys come and visit me during this uh, situation we're in with Russia and Ukraine, this is what's here right now. So guys, I hope you're enjoying my videos. Make sure you give me a call. Be glad to uh, give you prices, explain some things about you, uh, or, or explain some things about the uh, shelters to you, and see how I can help you and how fast I can do it.